The next three weeks was a literal beehive of activity in that ward. And then came the appointed hour. Two days before Christmas, 7 o'clock, the knock on the door, the same brother from Ogden with the same German accent, only this time emotion really did have the best of him. On a cold winter night in December in 1951, there came a knock at my door. A good brother from Ogden, Utah with a German accent asked if I were the bishop of the ward. I told him I was. He then said that his brother and his brother's wife and family were coming in just three weeks from Germany, that his brother had been a president of the Hamburg branch, that the family had endured much during the war, that an apartment had been rented for them in my ward. Would I come and look at the apartment? As we did so and went up the dark and uninviting staircase, he said, it isn't much, but it's more than they've had in Germany. He took the key and opened the lock, opened the door and switched on the light. I was not prepared for what I saw. The light in that living room consisted of one 40-watt bulb hanging from the ceiling by a little cord. That was all. It revealed a large hole worn in the center of the linoleum which covered the living room floor. The wallpaper was soiled, ancient. The paint on the woodwork was chipped and peeling. There wasn't a stick of furniture in the entire apartment. We went into the kitchen. There was an old icebox. And one of those old hot point ranges, the inverted L shape, one burner worked. The cupboard doors were all open. But the thing I best remember, every shelf was barren of any food. As we left the apartment that night, he handed me the key and said, I'll be back with my brother's family in three weeks, two days before Christmas. We'll pick them up at the airport, come by your house, visit the apartment, and then I'll take them home to Ogden. Sleep did not come easily to this bishop that night. I worried and tossed and turned and thought of that apartment. The next morning was Sunday. We met in our weekly Ward Welfare Committee meeting. One of my counselors said, Bishop, you don't seem your exuberant self this morning. Something wrong? I then recounted my experience of the night before. I told them all about my impressions of the apartment. A spiritual silence settled over that room and the members of that welfare committee. Then, after what seemed like an eternity, the group leader of the high priests, a man with flowing gray hair, Brother Erdley, he spoke up and said, Bishop, did you say that that apartment was inadequately lighted? I said, that's an understatement. He said, would you permit the high priests of this ward, under my direction as an electrical contractor, to rewire that apartment? I said, of course. Would you permit me to invite one of my suppliers to contribute a new range and another one to contribute a new refrigerator? Why, that would be fine. <laughs> the next person to speak was the president of the 70s Quorum, Brother Balmforth, in the floor covering business. He said, Bishop, I buy miles of carpet every year. Would you permit me to invite one of my suppliers to contribute some carpet? and allow the 70s of this ward under my direction to lay that carpet and put new linoleum in the kitchen. Of course, Brother Balmforth. Then the president of the elders' quorum spoke up, Brother Bowden, a painter. He said, Bishop, I'd like to contribute the paint, and I'd like to contribute the wallpaper. Would you permit the elders in this ward under my direction to repaper and repaint that apartment? Of course. And then Sister Miller, president of the Relief Society, said it all when she said, Bishop, if there's one thing in this world that the Relief Society cannot tolerate, 
its empty cupboard shelves. <laughs> Would you permit the Relief Society of this ward to fill those shelves? Of course. The next three weeks was a literal beehive of activity in that ward. And then came the appointed hour. Two days before Christmas, 7 o'clock, the knock on the door, the same brother from Ogden with the same German accent, only this time emotion really did have the best of him. He said, Bishop, Bishop, meet my brother. I looked upon a man who had endured much hardship during the war. I looked at his sweet wife who stood by his side, her hair done up in a little bob. I saw the children standing behind them like frightened little squirrels. I thought, how many nights has this family been underground? Night after night, while death and destruction rained down on their city. We went to the apartment. As we went up the dark staircase, I did not tell them what had taken place. I did not tell them that many in the ward were hidden away in the apartment, waiting for our arrival. <laughs> the brother from Ogden said, it isn't much, but it's more than they've had in Germany. Little did he know. As he took the key and opened the lock and opened the door, he flipped the switch, one of those new silent ones. <laughs> Gone was the 40-watt bulb suspended from the ceiling. There the light came from floor lamps, table lamps. We stepped over the threshold onto carpet that was rich and luxuriant. We were greeted by the aroma of newly papered walls and freshly painted woodwork. We went out into the kitchen, and there was a new refrigerator, a new stove. The cupboards had been painted. The doors were still open. But you could not have put another can of tuna fish or a bottle of fruit <laughs> on those shelves. The Relief Society had really done its job. We gravitated to the living room. It was Christmas. We sang Christmas carols. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. We sang in English, they sang in German. And then the father from Germany stood to thank us, realizing for the first time that this was all his. He put forth his hand, but could not speak. He buried his head against that shoulder and repeated the words sobbingly, Mein Bruder, mein Bruder, my brother. It was time for us to go. We went down the staircase, out onto the street. Snow was falling. You could feel the crunch of it under your feet. None of us spoke. And then a teenage girl who had participated said, Bishop, I feel better than I've ever felt in my whole life. Why? I answered her in the words of the Lord, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me.